was the agenda somewhere actually? Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dynamic agenda. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can we start with introductions? Yes, of course yeah. we can. Yeah. Thank you for volunteering. <laughs> to introduce myself. Um. So my name is Val, she her pronouns, and I am, I work at Boku, which is a software consulting company based out of Boston that works on um, the technical standard and compliance to it, as well as other things. And Leo and I are co-editors of the ECMA uh, 402 yeah. internationalization up, extension um, to recording, um, ECMA script. So as of recently, well, so I'm not next, I haven't read the whole uh, thing yet. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, oh my god, yeah. yeah, you're right. But that's that's who I am. I'm Adam, uh, he, him. I work at LinkedIn in front of UI stuff. I help run their design systems um, on the side with a lot of my time. I help, uh, I'm the ComCom uh, chair person for Note. Um, and yeah, been, with LinkedIn, been working pretty much with one foot in the open source space and the other foot in the corporate front end build system. And, you know, it felt like a nice uh, crossover with that. Uh, so I've gotten involved with stuff and been helping out a lot with website redesign and kind of sort of helping orchestrate other parts of the community side of things. Um, yeah, that's my stuff. Good. Um, I'm Chris Mills. I am the uh, content team manager and content lead for MDN over at Mozilla. Um, and nobody turned up to my session, so I've come to stalk your session. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, hey, Emily. Uh, he, him, uh, for work, uh, consulting for uh, Vincent, a Finnish consulting company. Uh, here because um, I, I, saw, I, I find it interesting and fun to work on JavaScript localization projects. Uh, message format uh, is one of the projects I maintain, mm -hmm. which is now an OpenJS project also make plural and uh, the, the intel plural rules polyfill uh, is is mine and uh, recently I've started messing around with the uh, fluent project that Mozilla uh, has set up wrote a compiler for a uh, built-time compiler for that and uh, have been hanging around occasionally in the 402 monthly sessions but not for a couple of months now Oh, that's how long I've been attending. So sure. that's how long I've been attending. <laughs> hey, great to so, meet you in person after all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's been more than a year yeah. since we started. It was, <laughs> it was terrific actually working on one of the uh, things for um, Intel plural, plural rules to polyfill for that to hit one of the things that is in the spec because I was messing around with it. Oh, the way that you can take the same object and pass it to multiple different constructions and it just works. Oh, cool. It, it, it's semi-magic. Good. But yeah. The same options object? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that one. Good job. That was, it yeah, was, it was yeah. Mm -hmm. now, now Shane is there keeping up the doubt. Are you? Yeah. Hi, I'm Dhruv. I have recently completed my graduation last about seven to eight days ago. Nice. <laughs> so for me, the young, yeah. So I'm from India. Actually, have been involved in the website redesign and internalization team. So yes, that's it. Uh, also, I'll be joining as a software team engineer for, for Node. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, oh, the team for yeah. Node, the website redesign team yes. for Node. Okay. Yes, yes, actually. Uh, also, I'll be joining as a software engineer in the front end engineering team at Clear Tax, which is one of the biggest, or say, the biggest platform for online taxi fillings in India. So. Hey, I'm Ben, uh, the most organized person in the world. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm Ben. Hey, I. Oh, oh hello. Hello. Hey again. Uh, I work for uh, hey, Envision, uh, the design uh, software prototyping company. And um, I am a part of the community committee for Node.js, um, work on various initiatives, uh, including uh, internationalization. And so that's what brings me here to it today. And um, yeah, really exciting things in the design world and uh, really exciting things in internationalizing uh, all the things for Node and 
excited to have Dan here and uh, Stephen and mm -hmm. Felix. Looks like Felix is online too. Yep. Uh, yeah, so just really excited to get to know y'all and put some uh, faces to, uh, to names and uh, forward. Very good. What's your say? Introduce yourself. Yeah, <laughs> Well, I'm on. I actually don't know what's um, gonna happen here. I just heard about I18. Want to just say what can I do? Awesome, cool. Yeah. What's your name? Onur. Onur. Yeah. Onur. Because I call him Laru, if it's easy for you. <laughs> uh, and hi, I'm Daniel Ehrenberg, or Little Dan on the internet, and uh, <clears throat> I work on CC39 on different specifications, including uh, Ecmo 42, and so. Uh, yeah, would be if if folks are interested. One thing we could we could talk about is like what proposals are being discussed and what uh, things we should discuss. Like uh, Emily mentioned, message format, uh, and um, well, I guess that was sort of a different context. But uh, to make internationalization work for Node.js users. Mm -hmm. On the phone. You went. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, uh, can you introduce yourself, Stephen? Certainly. So I'm Stephen Loomis, uh, coming to you from sunny California. Um, you can see the sun in the background there. Um, it, it's the sun is on, is scheduled. Uh, <laughs> so um, and I work for IBM's Global Foundations team, um, and I work on um, ICU and CLDR uh, libraries uh, for um, with the Unicode project. Um, and with um, JavaScript, one thing I've, I've been involved in is getting Node, um, ICU to be on by default in Node version .12. Um, that was a, kind of my first foray into uh, JavaScript land. And I've also been involved in the ECMA 402 uh, committee. Awesome. Uh, Felix, are you on the line there? Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I actually just found this on Twitter and thought it would be awesome. interesting to follow along. So Woo. if you don't find that. <laughs> yeah, no problem. That sounds great. Uh, welcome. What, uh, what's your story? Uh, I'm a software engineer. I work remote from Germany for a company in San Francisco called Sourcegraph. And I'm just a Node enthusiast. Right. That sounds great. Well, welcome. Excited to have you. OK, uh, so there is a agenda published. If you go to. Um, the summit uh, issues. Um, so if you go to the Node.js summit issues, uh, can everybody find that if they'd like? Um, and then go to, uh, should be at the top of the list since I just updated it, but it's, it's 164. Scroll down to the bottom there at the last comment, uh, I've published the agenda. Uh, as someone said, I think it was Dan, this can be a dynamic agenda, so please feel free to, <laughs> to add, add In items. other words, you didn't remember all the things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, there's enough here to fill up the next, you know, 45 minutes or whatever, um, I feel like. Uh, so let me start out with the, uh, the first part of this session here. So first I'd like to reiterate what this working group is about. Um, Internationalization houses about three different concerns, and one is translation. So translation infrastructure for translation of textual assets like, uh, you know, our documentation um, and uh, our websites, and how do we uh, translate those into every language? Um, utilize a service, the CrowdIn service, uh, to uh, perform to as. Uh, a landing for translators to be able to translate those. And we've set up uh, the automated, um, uh, the, the automation of uh, putting translations in as PRs into our uh, documentation repository right now. So there's that, um, translating our stuff. Uh, and the next would be uh, INTL uh, implementation in Node.js, which is uh, where Steven and um, other folks are, are involved. Um, and we'll get into talking more about, oh, Stephen, uh, did you, were you able to get the agenda? Yes. Okay, cool, awesome. So um, I'll uh, give some room to Stephen to update us on that uh, in just a little bit. Um, but we're excited to figure out how to uh, 
support um, that team more and uh, create ways to uh, contribute to uh, that initiative. Um, and then uh, we also concern ourselves with uh, support for TC39 and ECMA 402. We're excited to hear from Dan uh, today on current status on all the things and um, figure out ways that we can, what the needs are and how we can support, uh, support them. Um, so first, uh, I'm going to kick things off with uh, the website redesign initiative, which is a con uh, community committee initiative. Um, and we've been talking a little bit about uh, the our needs, but what I'd like to do now is create some action items um, for supporting uh, new translations. Um, so uh, this first item was mostly for me, uh, <laughs> just to be able to uh, connect on this. Um, yeah, I, so really where we're at right now is we've got translation infrastructure set up, but we need to target um, our your, your textual assets, right? So um, we need to figure out how to, uh, you know, consume that and then be able to um, uh, publish it as an NPM module um, so that you can, uh, you know, consume it. So I think like we're just, just kind of just like a quick update and then we can move on to other things. Um, but we, uh, yeah, I guess the, the next steps are to um, set up uh, an NPM account, publish, you know, publish the, the module and then update and version from there. Um, and uh, all this to say, you know, like I, th I think as we create a project board for that, um, and uh, I would love it if, you know, uh, website redesign could um, keep in touch with that. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, like, what are your main concerns, you know? Uh, with, uh, yeah, initiative? so we aren't blocked from new features quite yet, which is awesome. Like, this cool. is, it'll be a blocker for launch, if, well, not if, when that happens. <laughs> um, I, we have a lot of feature additions to add, which we'll be talking about tomorrow morning, first event tomorrow morning, website redesign. Cool. We'll talk about cool new stuff. Um, and what next steps are, uh, but yeah, so we're we're not immediately blocked by it. Uh, it will be a locker for switching it over to the main domain um, when that choice is made. Um, so it, from what it sounds like, that we're we're mostly going to be working in Markdown files. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be pulling from a number of different sources. I believe is the plan. We don't want to break up documentation from the core or API docs, although we do want to display them on the site. Um, we don't want to. Uh, we're, we're not, at the moment, all the kind of like learn documentation, the get, getting started documentation does live in the nodejs.dev repo right now. Um, but we may also start pulling in files from other repos. Like it would be nice if community page stuff could live in the concom repo. You know, get, try and keep documentation where uh, living alongside the, the team that is working with it on the regular. So we're hoping to take this kind of federated model of pulling content in. Um, so we'll probably be pulling from a few different sources, and I'm not sure uh, how that will affect like the module publishing for that. We then have the flip side of this problem, where after you, after stuff is scooped in, translated through Crowdin, um, and the module is published, we then need to make sure that we're updated. <laughs> so like we need something like Greenkeeper or something up there just to keep keep this thing auto updating on the regular if we do go the module route for. So you're you're pulling from multiple markdown sources, right? Correct. We will be, yeah. Okay. Um, right now, the page as it is just comes from website redesign. Okay. Um, that repo because it's it's literally just like a little. The js.dev is a microsite that just has um, uh, getting started documentation, like starting to learn Node. But we're going to expand it to have API docs, our own page, downloads page, um, community pages. <coughs> so we'll, we'll be pulling from a number of different sources. Okay. Um, Quick question, just for my understanding, to get in. What should that NPM module exactly do? Oh yeah, so you mean the internationalization NPM module? Yeah, yeah. So, um, hey, Jory. Hi, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Not a problem. Um, so, what the what the uh, internationalization um, repo is going to export is a module containing all of the. Uh, it's just like one one giant uh, JSON blob mm -hmm. with uh, all the text. Um, translated texts mm -hmm. yeah. so that it can be uh, keyed and imported um, into the website or whatever the end destination is. Mm -hmm. So we may want to consider when publishing that module to like publish a different one per repo. 
yeah. um, so that we're not like, if something bumps in the API docs, we don't have to bump the text translations for um, uh, you know the learn documentation. Mm -hmm. um, just keep kind of separation concerns there. Uh, it's, it's one option. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Just yeah, something to consider as you kind of craft how that gets split up. Um, also, we probably don't want it as just like a giant monolithic JSON blob because we mm -hmm. can't do you know yeah, like huge page, loading stuff page loads, or yeah. route splitting or anything like that. So. Right. Um, yes, you know, just kind of like per per like one JSON per Markdown file would probably be best because I'm doing bundle it at full time. Because you're can, yeah How you're using we, yeah it's yeah. for that um, or, uh, yeah I mean you're using guest yeah. yeah but yeah the the API docs are already being translated is my understanding right yeah just, right. yeah we just don't have a published artifact for that uh yes so actual action items it sounds like are hook in Node.js.dev so we can get translations for that um, come up with a process for adding new repos to the translation pipeline. Um, getting the module publishing down, that's the third action item. And then fourth action item is mostly on the website redesign side of how do we auto-update and consume translations. So that, that's on us after mm -hmm. the module gets out. Like, I think that's our uh, integration point. Yeah. The handoff yeah. The work goes on to this for the other working group. Okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna have to figure out how we, yes. Definitely. Okay. I think you covered all that. We're, we're going to have to figure out how we want to split it up. Um, yeah, consuming various uh, or consuming uh, disparate sources. I think you and I should stay in touch about how we're going to utilize that. Um, you know, if that's, I'm just trying to decide, like, should uh, internationalization consume one thing from you or should we target all those things to, since they might all be the source of truth? Because like getting down to one source of truth would be nice, but, um, yeah. but uh, okay, cool, yeah. Um, great, I think uh, in the interest of time and other uh, stuff we can push along. Um, do you have any questions for me? No, no okay. let's just work through, you know, technical details offline about how to split it up, or Great. I guess online. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> kind of I, how to split it up properly. I also have other yeah thoughts. I've been doing some documentation automation uh, at work for this sort of thing. So um, when we do sync, when you do get to the point to where you need to um, set up like a greenkeeper or something like mm -hmm. that, let me know. Because um, there's definitely ways that we should hook it into um, releases. I think is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So we can, yeah. yeah. Uh, cool. Okay, let's go down the line here. Minimal manual button pushing is great. <laughs> yeah, nothing like that. I'm gonna refresh and just see if anybody dyna dynamically updated this blog and complete the word also. <laughs> just <laughs> fail it. Fail. Okay, um, or no, it's AIs. Wow, I'm tired. Um, okay, so great. Let's move on to uh, INTL um, in Node.js and this specifically uh, Steven's area of expertise uh, here. And I, my, my only question here for you, Steven, as far as um, facilitating a IATN repo is something I've noticed is there's a few people in the um, INTL uh, GitHub team or like in the Node.js team. And um, it just seems like, you know, there's not a great window for contributors to join or to help with um, getting into, uh, you know, supporting INTL like in Node.js um, core. And um, like, it seems like there's a few, like a handful of active people uh, working on those issues. We have a tag, you know, that like right. for whatever. But like, um, how can we support that group more? I'd like to like create a, a contributing guide, um, that kind of thing. And what are your thoughts on that? And then maybe you can give us an update on uh, how uh, INTL and Node.js is doing, and anything that you'd like to talk about. Sure. <clears throat> well, the one I mean, one thing to 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 um, keep in mind is that the INTL object in Node.js, um, its implementation comes directly from V8. Um, so on the Node.js side, a lot of the um, the items are are more in the realm of kind of packaging and. Uh, options and configuration, um, uh, specifically data loading, is is the um, um, it, it is off, often been the elephant in the room, um, so to speak. And um, as far as the as um, what's in Node itself, and so a lot of the INTL contribution work actually happens in V8, which is where the actual implementation is for INTL, <clears throat> and then the implementation of 
what V8 is calling is in the, um, the ICU project, which is the International Components for Unicode. Um, it's a open source uh, C and C++ and also Java library from Unicode itself. Um, and so a lot of the work happens there or in the CLDR repository, which is the local data, uh, which is uh, also from Unicode. The good thing is that the Unicode repositories are now all on GitHub. Um, th that was a migration. Just CLDR just moved a couple a month ago, I guess. Um, yeah, Pardon? Uh, it's weird. Around the table, people are just saying, woo, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So, <laughs> so it should be a lot easier to, to um, uh, access the, what's happening with those projects um, and even open a PR into Upstream. So I don't know if that answers your question, um, but in the, so, so for example, from my, my history, um, getting Node.js into, sorry, getting international turned on by default in Node.js.12 was a, um, major milestone um, because the Intel support was there before, but it was optional and had this build process. Uh, and the big, the big issue with that was data loading and data loading remains an, uh, a major issue. Um, there's a, an um, open, open issue in the full ICU project. Um, I'm just gonna try to type while I'm speaking here. Wait, can, you, can you put that maybe as a comment in the agenda? I am, yeah, I'm typing directly into that um, if I don't click the close button. Okay, so I put a link to a, an open question on full ICU NPM. Um, and it's kind of a question of whether the data loading for full ICU um, should, should move out of NPM into um, WGET, because we get a lot of concerns. Uh, there was one just, one opened just a few two days ago um, about the way the full ICU project um, actually works. And full ICU is just a loader. It's not, it doesn't do anything fancy. Um, so anyway, if I could get some eyes on that, that one. But the idea is to basically pull from, IC, from GitHub um, instead of trying to do this hacky post install, um, sub NPM install that full ICU does. Awesome. It would be great to, to have a uh, um, contributing guide. I think what I what I'd started on previously was something that tries to explain the stack, basically where all these different pieces come from. Uh, if you're at the level of, hey, the date format is wrong when I try to print this date, uh, you're often going to end up having looking at that at the CLDR side, for example. Yeah, that's great. No, I really appreciate. Uh your, your work on that and being able to, yeah. Um, like, uh, I think that's something that we can evolve um, and figure out how to, um, so the, the thing that I perceive is there's going to like, looking from, uh, looking from sort of like a high level, um, uh, people who are getting involved in this repository like, or in the work, the internationalization working group, mm -hmm. um, we're just gonna need a, a verbose contributing guide that, uh, basically brings to light everything that you, you just said, you know, like from um, sort of the ground up and, yeah. and like, uh, that's something that I would, I would love to do uh, to focus on sharing. Like, I mean, even what ICU, you know, Unicode and ICU and CLDR and all these things are and how they work and how they support, um, you know, the INTL object and that sort of thing. Right. Um, so I think like, creating a contribution guide there that is sort of like a knowledge dump and then how to support Unicode would be a great place to start um, as well as, uh, yeah, I guess um, I just want to figure out how we can bleed more help into what you're doing. Um, so the more that we evolve uh, that conversation through the ITN and repo, um, the better, I think. Right. Um, yeah. D does anybody else have uh, thoughts or questions on what Steven uh, just covered? or potentially like to take the conversation in another direction uh, based on INTL and them. What about shipping full ICU always by default? Yeah, that, that's, uh, um, that there's, an, there's an issue open that's for exactly that. Um, and I can, I can try to link that one in here. 
I mean, that, that would be my preference. I mean, the, the terms English only um, are kind of um, grading, shall we say. I mean, that's kind of what I spend my career trying to avoid <laughs> is English only. But um, the, 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 the issue with that is, is, <clears throat> is just download size. Um, but I'll put a link to the issue. Um, I, would for, I would certainly support that. Um, but the other thing that we could do is have downloads provide both. So basically just have a pre-built binary. There is a small one if you really want to download a small one. Um, but uh, basically, you know, encourage people to just download, just download the full, full content. What's the, do we have numbers on the, the float that we get? Oh, yes. Yeah. It's bloat if it's a, oh, well, anyway. Um, yeah. It, well, it basically double. It doubles the size of the download. Oh, man. So yeah. It was like forty yeah. percent. And I guess it'll get worse over time. It's and it'll get worse over time. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, uh, thirty-five megabytes to forty-nine megabytes. Yeah, I mean, it is a real. It's it's a real issue. I mean, it's not a. It's not a trivial, and I don't. I just don't. I'm trying, not finding it at the same time. I guess I shouldn't search and talk at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it is, it is a, I mean, it is a real issue. And I, I understand, I mean, I run, I run Node on a Raspberry uh, Pi and, and small devices. Um, and so th there are cases where, where people are um, more concerned about the, the disk space than, than, um, than the internationalization. Um, you know, not everything has text content flowing through it. Um, and you also might have something that's, um, constrained in terms of of um you know runtime footprints like if you're if you're running on a, a a server and you're paying for the disk space um you know but so it's a it's a valid concern but i think i think there there's some value to having the default be um be full just so that it, it reduces the pain point because it's always the issue right we get these issues um once in a while in node basically my date format doesn't work and the reason is because you're not using English, um, and it, it. What's the phrase? The optics. The optics aren't. Don't look great on that. Mm -hmm. it, I guess like it's like how many people are in this situation where they need to run Node on like a Raspberry Pi or very constrained versus how many people are there that are just running Node in uh, development environments to run Webpack or uh, run in a container or on a server where they don't really care. They probably dump like tens and thousands of megabytes in node modules in yeah. that container too. Yeah. Um, so like, could like the default distribution have it included? And then there's a, another binary distribution, like a separate package, like node dash, no ICU or something like that. That is no. like the middle version that the, the Raspberry Pi users can right. download. Um, and they would probably be aware that they, they want to go for the minimal one, more so than the people. It, it's not no ICU. It's ICU with English. Right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Right. What it is now? One thing that, uh, personally, I don't believe that an argument that, oh, because of our thing, we'd like to increase the size of Node by 50% or 100% or so. That's not going to fly. Uh, but would it be conceivable or considerable uh, to think about despecializing English and rather make it explicit that this distribution that you're downloading has just English in it and possibly provide in parallel with it yeah. a number of different al other alternatives. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's just, that's, that's really just a, a question as far as what, um, you know, what we want to provide, <clears throat> you know, basically does this rise to the level of where we want to, where, where when people go to download, that this is, the, this is their A-B choice. I mean, effectively, they've got an A-B choice now. We just don't tell them that you're picking just English. Yeah. Or do right. we build, publish, right. binary? Well, right now, they have an A choice, oh. right? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> English is good for you. <laughs> what was your question, Adam? Oh, I, I asked, do we, we don't even publish a binary right now that has the full language back, right? Right, yeah. we don't. Need to get that in. That, that's why, man. They only have an A choice. Yeah. 
I'm going to ask something that's crazy and comes from um, not probably having a full grasp of the, the, the tech involved, but it's, it's something that we can't turn into packages that we can say, if you have a use case for it, install it. Um, is there any remote possibility of having that type of opt-in? As a, as a package? Yeah. Yeah, so basically there's a package called full ICU. Um, okay. And if you do NPM install full ICU, it turns around and, and installs, installs the data for you as a package. Um, but the, the thing is that the, um, the data needs to be configured at startup time of, of Node and V8. Um, so you can't, you can't just include it. It's not really, it's not really a module. Um, it's kind of just a, a post install loader hack. Um, but it's a way that you can, you can get the data on your disk um, by adding it to package JSON. Um, and this is documented in the in the um, in, in the readme. Um, yeah, on the agenda we have a link to um, full IC NPM number thirty six. Is my question about um, pulling from ICU GitHub release instead of doing a um, uh, an, a post install? Sorry, having the post install script just do a download, basically like a, a um, just a fetch from GitHub rather than. Um, turning around and reinstalling a sub package that's not really a package. Um, yeah. Uh, question over here. I'm yeah. curious why you called that a hack, because it's really, there's no problem with it, right? And it's very easy for the programmer's perspective, right? Just to uh, include it. I mean, I guess it's not like a regular node module, but still it, it's, it, it's very easy, right? It's easy, yes, but you know, you can look at the, if, if, you, if you look at the linked, there's a linked issue, install process is broken unsafe. So um, it's it, it is it, it's easy when it works. Basically, um, I call it a hack because it's not. First of all, including it as a module doesn't actually get you data. It doesn't. Would it, no. you have to do something else as well? Yes, you have to start up the node. Um, you have to start up the node runtime with the right option to include the the data oh. file and probably point it. Yeah, point it to the path where it was installed. Okay, yeah, no, so, so you know, npm install and require this module doesn't do what npm install and require module usually does, which is pull in functionality. Yep. Um, so that's hack number one. The hack number two is that um, it's um, you know a, any package manager is trying to manage the transitive dependencies, um, and this in, this it breaks that by um, wh when it in post install it goes and installs another package and which package it installs depends on the endianness and the version of, of node that you're running. So you can't predict it at, at um, in, you know, original install time. So it's, that, that's why I call it a hack. Okay. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a convenience. It's kind of a convenience when it works, but it's, uh, it's, it's not the best. Um, it's not the best approach. I've used a uh, full ICU by like setting an environment variable in my right. profile that points to the global node modules full ICU. But then yeah. like once you upgrade a node version right. uh, with NVM, suddenly node fails to start up because it says like, well, couldn't find the ICU data I'm yeah. bailing. Yeah. And uh, then you have to like on every upgrade, you have to reinstall a full ICU. And right. it just, it would make way more sense if that was not inside the node modules. Uh, folder or I don't know, some somehow managed out of band, not yeah. through a note module. Yeah, that would, that would be good. Um, and it, it really, it could be, it could go somewhere else um, easily. I mean, node could, could have a, a directory that it, it, um, it expects. Um, and, and we, we looked at, there's an, an old issue um, to do, to basically detect, um, Full ICU. I, it eventually got closed just because, um, you know, really I needed I, I needed to figure out how to how to test it on all platforms. Um, but I'll I, I'll put a link to that one also. Cool, awesome. Uh, if you do that, that'd be great, uh, Stephen. I think uh, in the interest of time, we're going to yep. move along. Uh, Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you so much for your updates. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, really appreciate it. Excited to connect with you again and uh, spin up, um, you know, some regular working group sessions again. Um, I think the action item I'm taking from here uh, as well is to update our contributing guide and uh, kind of work with you on that. Yep. Um,
cool. Um, okay, let's spin over to uh, what's going on with uh, TC39 in ECMA 402. Um, I think the you know the main question that I uh, or the main I guess rhetorical question I'd like to answer more over time is um, how this working group can specifically uh, support um, the uh, 402 specification uh, in a way that is um, useful and what are the needs and uh, how do we create a more meaningful collaboration over time? Uh, yeah, so. I could talk about the different ECMO 402 proposals that uh, that are under discussion. Also, Valerie, I don't know if you're interested in presenting part of this, or I'm, I didn't ask you to prepare. Yeah, so. yeah, no, go ahead. Um, I'll contribute. Uh, if technically, I believe we have 15 minutes for this session left. On the other hand, there's nothing else scheduled for this room, so I'm gonna go can... to another thing after this. So okay. Uh, so. so um, the, the Intel API provides things like date time format, where you put in a date and you, uh, you can put in formatting options, like including the locale, but also including different, like which components of the date you care about. And it gives you a string, which is locale dependent. So there's, there's a bunch of, uh, ongoing, <coughs> ongoing feature work to add more functionality to this, like, there's one PR that would add sort of like Chinese calendar functionality, uh, certain kinds of like informal related uh, lunar calendar, sorry, not lunar calendar, like 60 year cycle mm -hmm. uh, things, but also about millisecond digits. There's also uh, with like number format, there's ongoing work to add features like unit formatting or uh, approximation with sort of millions or thousands. Uh, we also have uh, new formatters like relative time format, which I think is shipping in node, uh, I don't know which version, but which, <laughs> and, and plural rules, which, which Emily discussed. Um, uh, and we're considering additional things like that. Uh, there's also format, format range to show the difference between two dates. So these could be useful in internationalized web apps when they're trying to generate strings you can use the same functionality on both the client and the server. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the hope. Uh, mm -hmm. The WebCompat issue is, is uh, for the older features, they're, they're very broadly supported. And I think you can, you can count on the basics of date time format, number format, and collator being there. Mm -hmm. And then the other ones are more mixed. Um, and so I'm wondering, like, do you face these needs in Node? Uh, and what what functionality might be useful for you. Um, yeah, one, one high level thing is something like Project Fluent. Should we, um, should we eventually standardize something like, like that, which provides uh, not just like a message formatting format string, which could unify a lot of things when you have to get translators, then you, there's some point where you're choosing a format and there are various different tools that use different formats. And then, but also not just that, but also the uh, format for the, the bundle, which would be used, which, which has meaning both on the client and the server potentially. And um, so Project Fluent goes in this area and this is sort of a frequently requested thing for ECMO 402. So it's something that I'm kind of wondering what, whether you have thoughts on these things. Also, just to say one thing about the co compatibility um, on browsers is that really um, Firefox and Chrome and Safari are like up to date and have been really implementing Intel as we've been uh, developing it in, in ECMA 402. Um, but Microsoft is far behind. <laughs> but as we know, they're, they are also switching out their JavaScript engine to V8. Mm -hmm. So going forward, um, like soon enough, we'll have um, Intel and all the and all the browsers. Well, if you're interested in working on JavaScript engines, there's still a lot of exciting work to do, <laughs> like on the <laughs> Firefox end. Uh, like some of them are implemented, but there's still some gaps. And yeah, it's all on a volunteer true. basis. Yeah. On Safari, I'm not aware. Uh, I guess Safari's not really working on new but, features. But, but they've come to the meetings. They're, yeah, they're following they're the steps. So the great thing yeah. is that we have uh, like buy-in from all three browsers yeah. about this. 
and the person from Safari actually said that he'd be up for mentoring somebody who oh, wants to come in and implement this. So if you're yeah. interested in getting involved in C++ coding, <laughs> and if you're interested in improving web compatibility of these things, uh, this could be a great place. I like how you said all three browsers. Which one are you leaving? Well, oh, it's, no. a, it's a very sad <laughs> phrase, all three browsers, know, but, uh, you know, uh, that's the world. Yeah. Chromium and through the uh, node itself, they're not quite complete. I mean, there are still a couple of bugs still left yeah. in there. The, the reason why I have an Intel plural rules polyfill that still uh, is because the minimum fraction digits is still not working practically anywhere. Do you, do you have an issue open for that? Is there a test uh, that? In that? Chromium, yes, there is. So I'd recommend writing an email to Frank uh, Tang, who's working on implementing this. He's yeah, been really... Yeah. Uh, He's last commented on that in February, something. Oh, okay. Yeah. 8866. It's on the V8. Uh, well, I'll take yeah. a look at that. Yeah. But it's like nearly complete. They are like, like I mean, gaps. Plural rules, uh, minimum fraction digits. Okay, that was something I worked on the implementation. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, That's like uh, plural rules. Um, you know what? That means we don't have a test for that in SM4.2 because plural rules tests pass on all three browsers right now. Yeah, but. But yeah. Yeah, so there's a anyway, there's a bug. You should write a test for it. Oh, really? There's plural rules there's... support in Safari? Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I know, but I'm very we should do that. So yeah. I'll look at the bug maybe and I'll break the test later today or something. Uh, um, what did you say the bug number was? Eight eight six six. But yeah, that this is quite a detailed thing. Regarding uh, message formatting, which you mentioned earlier, uh, I don't think there's reason to do anything quite right away because Fluid is too early. The JavaScript implementation of that is still in 0.x. And there's like active discussion about the, the API for that. And it's the, the current API will change and break, and it's just there's this discussion of are we going to break it that, this way or that way? <laughs> uh, so it, it's not stable by any means yet. Okay. Oh, it, it looks like they're they're making good progress on this issue. Sure. <laughs> so maybe soonish. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I think, I mean, that one, in, but the, the plural rules, minimum fraction digits, <coughs> I think the only thing that the now fluent, for example, is instructing, use uh, the Intel plural rules polyfill in order to get that one working. Everything else from Intel, uh, at least they're not saying that anything else needs polyfill. Okay. Um, awesome. So, uh, I think in the interest of uh, moving along, uh, are there other proposals that you would like to talk about? Uh, you covered a lot. I, I don't know. I sort of them. also just want to hear what people. That sounds awesome. What do you guys want? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, so there's like Intel Segmenter, which is undergoing a bunch of potential change. Uh, you about oh, that yeah. one. Do you, yeah. Do you want to describe it? Well, you you should actually. Okay, Intel Display Names is uh, like a way for you to get certain big strings, like the names of all the countries in the world in all the different languages, which is useful if you build a like a region picker. Well, yeah. It, you you might have heard like oh the Unicode people want you to say words like code blank. It turns out there's all sorts of different words that in the internationalization world you're supposed to use like region rather than 
kindly. Or, uh, <laughs> I, I wasn't going to say anything, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you could you could probably walk us through a lot of these. Yeah, that's one of those. Well, no, I mean, Antarctica is not a country. You know, I mean, it's you, you can take a. It, it doesn't have to get political to to describe that that <laughs> um, Right, and then like, what what is a language? So wait, I guess people are okay using the word language, but look at. Language is okay, yeah. And locale is supposed to be a place, right? Technically. Anyway, go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it also includes like names, it includes names for a bunch of these different things. Uh, and so that should help, well, on the web, it should help reduce the, the binary size that it has to be shipped over. On the server, I think it has the same function, but it doesn't reduce the size of things that get shipped over, but it reduces the amount of stuff that you have to the data that you have to pull off of, uh, you know, some NPM module, and you can instead have this sort of higher level looking API for it. And it allows you to externalize issues like the Czech Republic being Czech here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did that, did that happen? It's happened. Yes, it's happened. <laughs> well, the thing is, there, there, are always, there are always things like this, you know, Swaziland Thanks. is now East Swatini and, and such. And, but even besides changes, um, just the, the, the load in, in translation, you know, there's, there's a lot of translated content. Uh, you know, my, I, I work with our internal translation processes and tools. Um, and a lot of times people will have submit for translation, you know, a list of, a list of regions, a, a list of languages. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have to translate the same stuff over and over, um, you know, you, you can spend your money and time on, on something else. Hence the spy names. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's a million application uh, reasons for having uh, display names uh, really available, you know, through the uh, Intel object. But it does exacerbate the uh, megabyte problem. Yeah, even yeah. though, I, I mean, like, Intel 4.2, I mean, FM 4.2 is having this problem because we're increasing the size of the browser. So, yeah. um, download. Mm -hmm. So that's an issue we face. Yeah. As well as Node. <laughs> Yeah, I, I expect though that that data is already there for for um, on on the browser uh, in many cases, but uh, like like where? Um, We're talking about the size of the download of the browser binary. Yes, but some of the but the the I mean if the browser already shows an accept language pop up. That says enter the languages you want to translate. Then the the browser already has a translated list of languages. For example. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And that's getting bigger now. Uh, I think so. I think this is something that we've been looking into in this group, and that for most of the ECMA 402 things, their data that's already in the browser, stuff like units, mm. is not in Chrome, but then it's there in iOS. Mm -hmm. So then it's kind of okay or moderately okay uh they ended up reducing the list of units that are supported so then the increment in binary size was less and that's you know working through these size issues because they're really kind of yeah. pragmatic issues people will update their browser less if they have to download a bigger browser maybe i mean arguably of course all of this is shared not just being being javascript engines but the, the whole ecosystem of, of everything running uh, yeah. on your system. So it is arguable that the data responsibility for getting that data and be, making it available ought to be on an even higher level, effectively with the distro that you're using. Yeah, arguably everybody should be updating their operating system frequently and that should enable <laughs> dynamic yeah. thinking. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't that happens sometimes, it doesn't happen other times. Chrome statically links in its ICU okay. and, uh, and it can use some resources. I'm, I don't know all the, all the details. Yeah. Sure but it is an right. issue. It, it is worth noting it's an issue. It doesn't, it's not a, it doesn't come for free. Yeah. I'm curious because I'm new to the browser implementation side of things. Like, what kind of footprint is adding these names? Uh, you know, incur, and then like uh, in comparison, like how big of an increase is that? Um, 
I could look through the notes. We discussed it a couple of weeks ago, but I can't remember the numbers off the And okay. there were a bunch of numbers that we were talking about for this particular one for this uh, Insel display names. Um, and there was one version where like, the Chrome binary would have been 700 kilobytes large or something like oh, that. Yeah. And then they had a bunch of different alternatives calculated out for like, what if we left out this stuff? What if we left out that stuff? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that, in, I don't know if that's what the question was getting Yeah, at. yeah, no, it is. Yeah, like what's, what's the data size? And then like in comparison to, I don't know, like in the, in the standardization process, like what, um, how, I mean, how much data is acceptable to, to increase with um, something like INTL? You know, like, what, is there like a typical um, acceptable, you know, level or anything? Or? I think it's the first time this is being discussed, really. Uh, so, no. I mean, <laughs> like, if nobody yeah. notices and gets upset, yeah. it's usually like a different team that focuses on reducing the, the binary size from the team that's trying to add the features. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, to, Complicated yep. making process. Yeah. Okay. Yep. At least that's how it seems. At least that's how people talk about it for Chrome and Firefox. I have no idea how uh, Sorry, how in Safari things are structured. Mm -hmm. I was going to say I haven't got exact numbers, but you constantly see discussions in the Gecko platform team go, "Nice to shave this bit off. It managed to move this unused code." And the else goes, "Yeah, I added this." <laughs> yeah, the the graph is sometimes like creeping upwards mm -hmm. in Chrome, and then like they put in this deliberate effort and get it down, and then it creeps upwards again. Yeah, because just like writing any code at all increases the size. Right. Sure. And I wonder if anyone has an idea of like a max size that they would like their <laughs> browser to be. Uh, you know, depends on the application. To the extent yeah. that one does have such a size, it doesn't seem to be making it through to our discussions. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and also, you know, we're we're always trying to to add more. Um, you, you know, a colleague of, of mine is is going to visit the um, the uh, the Chickasaw Nank Chickasaw. Um, people and some other uh, other groups, language groups, to try to bootstrap their um, language support um, of uh, Native American languages. Oh, so, wow. That's awesome. That's great. Wait, but, but, but then, but now you have new locales that are coming in, basically, so. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, I was just trying a couple editors the other day to see which one supported the most languages, and it was Emacs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh. Yep. laughs> Um, Cherokee was the one I knew it. I used to that. That's awesome. Cherokee used to be nice. Oh, man. <laughs> so, uh, oh, the size problems to kind of make a parallel mm -hmm. uh, to your question for what size is acceptable, it sounds like a lot like the, the web question of what's the maximum size of a progressive web app. Yeah. Like, yeah. The answer is what's your application? Who's downloading it? You know, why are they, you know, opening up the app? Right. So, you know, a lot of the solutions that the web has found for page loading or splitting a bundle to like that might some of that logic for reducing initial size yeah. might apply here. Well, Could yeah. you actually make node lazy load bits of the ICU data mm. as it needs them? Does that depend on the implementation? Yeah, uh, I had, I had. Um, we thought about this. There's for the short answer. Is, there's no mechanism for that now. Um, I thought about something like a callback handler, where if you don't find data, then call back to the user function and say, "Let me go fetch it for you." Um, Obviously, the place you go fetch it would have to be configurable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in the interest of time, we yep. uh, need to wrap up because it's uh, three past the hour. Uh, but I definitely have some action items here uh, that I'd like to take um, for kind of, I think it's more about uh, um, making the uh, t contribution process for proposals and how to get involved less abstract to people who may want to contribute for the first time, that sort of thing. I think that's really important uh, and we can do that through internationalization. But just having this conversation has been really, really good um, to get uh, visibility into it. And I'm definitely learning a lot too. So I'm really, I'm really, really thankful for y'all to be here. Um, if it's cool, I'd like to take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll just, gonna hold the laptop. Yeah. Right? Gonna, um, <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. Sweet. Yeah. There you go.
But yeah, we see Steven. On yeah, the screen. Okay. I can get a picture of the computer. There we go. Yay. Yeah. There we go. Yay. <laughs> I'm going back under the table. <laughs> 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 all right, gang, gang's all here. The gang's all here. <laughs> One, two, three, potatoes. <laughs> Actually, asparagus. 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 There we go. Asparagus. <laughs> potatoes is where you go. Oh, it's not a smile. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, so cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all. I'll put a I'll put a link on that lazy load question. I'll put a couple yeah. links in. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really interested in that. Okay. Cool. I mean it's kind of the same ask we have for the website for yeah. design, right? Is exactly. we don't want to load every language up front, so let right. us code split, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, same same issue. Well, probably for us, I mean, go back to design is it easier to have. That's easy because we already have all that. And in Node.js, yeah. probably, yeah. Uh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. You don't talk about lazy loading binary. Hey, thank you for coming, Stephen. Hey, welcome. Hey, I really, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, Felix is already off the line. I would have said thank you, but I really, really appreciate it for coming so early. Uh, and thank you for always being up for doing rad stuff. So thank you. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Right on. Hey, we'll see you Bye. next time. See you. Bye. That is so that's, cool. That's in my like hometown backyard. Um, I can super see that like being a, a no. thing that they no. cover in the press there. I thought, I thought like, you just closed up. Yeah. yeah. yeah.